This is The Big Picture, an official report of the United States Army, produced for the armed forces and the American people. Now to show you part of The Big Picture, here is Sergeant Stuart Queen. Life of the American soldier who is a part of usurer, the United States Army in Europe, represents a varied and exciting picture. In addition to training and duties necessary to keep a modern military force in a continuing state of combat readiness, American troops, together with their dependents, are able to carry on many activities. Many of the subjects are quite American in nature. Others reflect an international character. Still others are part of the recreational backdrop provided by the respective country in which the American and his family find themselves. Life abroad offers the Army family an opportunity to become well acquainted with the old world while maintaining its roots in the new. For the information and entertainment of usurer families, Army motion picture theaters regularly show newsreels which deal with the lives of usurer personnel on and off duty. Although these newsreels are specifically prepared for Army personnel and their dependents, the big picture again brings one of them to the American people as a cameo report on the life of an American soldier in Europe. Augsburg, Germany, the 11th Airborne Division Band helps herald in a soapbox derby. Units of the 11th Airborne sponsor almost half of the derby entrants in competition at the Rosenauer Stadium. All soapboxes are transferred to the inspection lines where a group of trained men scrutinize the jazzed up jalopies that the youngsters piece together all by themselves. Axles are measured and each soapbox is carefully weighed in, for each entry must conform with rigid mechanical specifications. One after another, the pint-sized drivers carefully wheel their peanut-sized racers to the starting platform. Tension is as strong among the kids as when Popeye loses his can of spinach in the movies. One second they're at the gate, the next streaming down the ramp and out on the quarter-mile-long speedway. Each of these juvenile hot riders is pitting his talents against the all-important element of time. competition is keen and each and every one of these youngsters is dead serious about winning this preliminary derby. Hard-working officials and even hard-working spectators all agree the racing youngsters put on a fine show, one and all. Miniature race cars continue to burn up the track as hopes and dreams come true as other eager young minds await the next race. When the final heat has been run, the winners are announced, and the victorious lads take their proud places in the Augsburg Soapbox Derby winner's circle. Next stop, the championship final. Majestic Jenner Mountain near Berchtesgaden, Germany, towers 6,500 feet above sea level. It's a real vacation favorite of American servicemen and their wives who take advantage of this outstanding cable car construction, the Yennerbahn, to enjoy the majestic Alpine view. It's a 10,500 foot unforgettable joyride. These two-seater plastic bubbles shovel back and forth over the rugged slopes and valleys. They're really safer than the Autobahn, although it doesn't always seem so. The higher we go, the more beautiful the view as the crest of Yenner Mountain draws near. From the summit station, it's a breathtaking view of the Alps. The snow-covered peaks sparkle in the bright sunlight. And the scenery is unparalleled. It's a real deal for the GI in Europe. 
This is really something to tell the folks at home. Then it's back in the Yenner Bond for the downhill ride. And going down is just as exciting as coming up, maybe more so. A unique experience, an alpine adventure in the Yenner Bond. Parachute infantry of the famed 11th Airborne Division in Europe board C-119s at Neubeberg Air Force Base for the latest wrinkle in human bombs. This is a planned drop where the critical drop zone will be pinpointed with newly bombed target accuracy using a system called CARP or Computed Air Release Points. These troopers, the famous Angels of Manila, will make a precision jump so critical, in fact, that a previously dropped computing team on the ground is even now measuring wind drift and other factors prior to giving the word. The stand up and hook up signal arrives via radio and the men prepare to move out. the jump signal, out they go, jumping at an elevation of 1,250 feet and at the normal interval of one man per second. These paratroopers will be on the ground in less than 60 seconds. Local farmers stop work to observe the action. And still they come. 100 troopers in all. And the landing, perfect, right in the hip pocket. Meet specialist Anthony Lutze, locksmith of the Verdun Quartermaster Supply Depot, whose open door policy makes locks as sometimes think. His job in the Army is certainly unique, but nevertheless very important. Lost keys or forgotten safe combinations are Tony's cup of tea. With his bag of tricks, there aren't many locks too tough for him. All in a day's work for Tony. On his day off, Tony likes to try his skill on antiquated locks. Here at this remote castle, an ancient door poses a real challenge. Perhaps this door hasn't been opened for generations. Watch this. Oh no, it can't be. Arriving in Ettelbruck, Luxembourg, is Major General W. Paul Johnson and family, among the many dignitaries attending ceremonies honoring General George W. Patton, Jr. Remembrance Day is set aside by the people of Luxembourg, honoring their World War II liberator. Prince Felix of Luxembourg arrives to officiate over the ceremonies. Soldiers of two nations pass in review. Flowers, as a token of thanks from a grateful people, are placed at the Patton Memorial. A 
a sincere tribute to a great soldier. What's new? The Army Pictorial Center demonstration team from New York shows just what mobile tactical TV can do and how it works at Baumholder, Germany. A cameraman demonstrates the 55-pound telescout TV camera, a camera that transmits a picture to a receiver one half mile away. It is then transmitted by way of a complicated electronic process through relay systems back to the combat commander as far as 25 miles away. In the control room, one of multiple images from different cameras is selected for projection to the command tent. Europe gets a good look at combat TV. At Friedberg, Germany, a miniature tank range answers the Army's problem in creating an economical means of training tank gunners. Ammunition for the machine guns is the 30 caliber quick disintegrating type that offers maximum safety. In the miniature battleground, the targets are given a last minute check. Gun barrels are prevented from straying by cables and iron bars. The targets are operated from a tower behind the firing line. Here the operator controls the movement of the targets, allowing speeds up to 50 miles per hour. So it's on target. Fire! Improved marksmanship is the payoff in this new and valuable addition to Army training methods. A signal starts the construction of a pontoon bridge across the Rhine. The 498th Engineer Battalion wastes no time getting underway, for this is to be an attempt to break existing records. Teamwork and split-second timing keynote the race against the clock. On the other side of the 750-foot river, the first pontoon section has been moved into place. Lieutenant General John Uncle, 7th Corps Commanding General, is among the interested spectators. Excitement mounts as the span nears completion. The last pin is driven into place and the bridge is completed in a record-breaking 2 hours 28 minutes. No less pleased than his men is the man in charge, Lieutenant Colonel John J. Pierce, who leads his troops over the newly completed bridge. It's a twofold celebration, for the Corps of Engineers is 182 years old this same day. A 20-foot-long cake helps the bridge builders commemorate a job well done. It's tent pitching time in Augsburg, as a German-American scout camporee, sponsored by the 505th Airborne Battle Group, is in full swing. Pride of Troop 24 from Nuremberg, an impressive totem pole the boys carved all by themselves.
displaying a steady hand in the culinary arts, the boys whip up a gourmet's delight. Major General Hugh P. Harris, commanding general of the 11th Airborne Division, is on hand for the festivities. American and German flags are raised, marking the beginning of the presentation ceremony. In remembrance of the camporee shared with American scouts, German patrols receive plaques as a symbol of unity, brotherhood, and friendship. It's 0400 hours, and Honest John, until recently a classified missile, is ready to fire. Army weather experts at Grafenweir, Germany, focus their instruments on a weather balloon sent aloft to determine wind, speed, and direction for exact and critical measurements required when Honest John is fired. Officers of the 7th Field Artillery Battery radio firing clearance. The giant rocket waits motionless until the firing key is pressed. And then... Off it goes. Honest John, a mighty weapon in our arsenal of democracy. Animals and soldiers just naturally congregate and the Frankfurt Zoo draws its share of vacationing GIs. Seals apparently are hollow. At least they can eat fish all day long and come right back for more. All except Grandpa, who's an old fellow and has indigestion. He just can't get over those young whippersnappers, and he lets them know it. From tropical Africa comes old Mammalia perissodactyla. You say it looks like a rhinoceros? You're right. That must be his Latin moniker. And speaking of Africa, who's afraid of lions? Not me. Although Mama Lion is an entirely different case. But the cubs are just as cute as they can be, as long as they don't grow up. Now here's a place where the people come to see the chimpanzees. Although the chimps think it's the other way around. Look, Ma, she loves me. And with that face, only a mother could love it. Look at all those Schaefer hounds. Yes, this is Landstuhl, Germany, where the quartermaster school maintains a training school for future guard dogs. Here, Rover and his pals learn obedience to commands and master many tricks that will make them valuable assets to the army. During this phase of training, they wear their regular colors, but change to the guard color and the war dog becomes a vicious attacker. This is demonstrated on a well-padded soldier who pretends he's worried, and he is. But Rover is well-trained by now and halts his attack upon command. Fences don't even slow down a good guard dog. Well done, boy. You get a three-day pass. 
This old familiar scene is perhaps on the way out as a new development makes its appearance. The Army medics are experimenting with this new type injection gun, developed by Lieutenant Colonel R.B. Lindbergh and Major D.B. Hunter of the Userer Medical Laboratory. The gun works on the hydraulic principle and is simple to operate. The old way of loading the needle contrasts sharply with the new and more efficient method. As many as 750 persons can be inoculated in an hour, and pleasantly. Another milestone for the Army medics. These parachutes are guaranteed to open. That could be a slogan. But at the parachute packing section of the Giesen Quartermaster Depot, the soldiers who pack them also jump with them. After each use, the parachutes are sent to this installation for extremely careful inspection, repair, reinspection, re-repair if needed, and only then do they go to the repacking tables. Repacking is quite an art, as PFC Art Friesen demonstrates. And that afternoon, the same PFC, Art Friesen, climbs aboard a C-119 to prove that he has faith in the parachutes he has repaired and repacked. Once each month, a parachute is selected at random, and each packer jumps. goes Frazen, and the chute opens just like it says in the instruction manual. back and do it all over again. The children's driving school is held in the French sector of the divided city of Berlin. The youngsters are taught the ABCs of traffic safety while being immune to the dangers of actual driving conditions. German police and members of the safety platoon of the 287th MP Battalion help the kinder into the foot-powered midget cars and start them on their way along the miniature driving course complete with international road signs. The officials at the kinder driving school maintain an expertly conducted program and the kids learn a lot by the maze of traffic lights, vehicles, bicycles, and pedestrians that combine into a realistic representation of the complicated European traffic pattern. No tickets are given by the police here, only information and help. The young drivers of tomorrow get a head start today at the Berlin Kinder Driving School. I was leaving the 11th Airborne on a three-day pass, and then I saw eight of the most gorgeous gals you'd ever set your eyes on. Everybody was running around and gawking at them like coon dogs. I heard these gals were the winners of the European beauty contest. You all can see why, can't you? But there was one that I sort of specially had my eye on. They was talked to for a while, and and the boys started to jump. But I was concentrating on this one, and gosh. Hmm. Well, anyway, as I was saying, y'all, wow, I think she kind of likes me. Anyway, the ladies got hungry, and they was fed in the chow hall. Uh, they was quite the ornaments for the place. Uh, didn't eat much, though. So, uh, The 
gal that kind of like me led the pack when they paraded by in their bathing suits. I guess there's no sense in me talking about those gals. You all can see for yourself. diplomas and little wings to make them honorary members of the 11th Airborne Division. Oh, what a doll. She done blew me another kiss. At Garmisch's Lake Ibsey, skiing enthusiasts take off for a fast turn around this beautiful lake. If you're an expert like these boys, one ski is all you need. Or like this fellow, you can cut some fancy capers. yourself a high seat. Maybe you'd rather go family style. It's all a lot of fun. Now, here's something better left to the experts. Ah, nothing to it. Look, we can't all be perfect. Perfect! This fellow is dressed for a spill. And he does. But it's all in fun. Fun for the entire family. You have seen a capsule report of life for our troops in Usurer the United States Army in Europe, as it is recorded for the newsreels by Army Signal Corps cameramen. Now this is Sergeant Stuart Queen, your host for The Big Picture. The Big Picture is an official report for the armed forces and the American people. Produced by the Army Pictorial Center. Presented by the Department of Army in cooperation with this station.